in today's readings that we have, we have some really big God events. So we have got this miraculous story about Elijah being carried up to heaven in a chariot. And then in the gospel, we've got this miraculous story about Jesus becoming whiter than white and other people showing up on the mountaintop. Uh, it's actually Elijah showing up on the mountaintop. Now, very seldom do you get one biblical character showing up in two stories on Sunday, but that just kind of shows you how significant Elijah was. Now, one of the things that sometimes we lose in these biblical stories when we get this really big, exciting event from God happening is we kind of lose the human story in the gospel lesson and in the Old Testament lesson. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Elijah and Elisha, about their relationship that we can see here and what that can tell us in our world today. So, start off with a little bit of background, okay? The story we have about Elijah and Elisha today is kind of in the middle. So before this, we had a lot of story about Elijah, and then after this, we have some story about Elisha. And in the middle is what we have today. So, if this were a Hollywood movie, this would be kind of the climax of the buddy road movie at this point, okay? But before this, I'm going to give you a little background of who Elijah is and why he's so significant that in Passover events, the Jewish people hold out an empty chair for Elijah. So Elijah shows up in the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Kings and 2 Kings, and he is going to confront King Ahab. Now, as you go through Kings and Chronicles, King Ahab was one of those kings who did evil in the sight of the Lord. So we've got Elijah showing up with Ahab. Now, Elijah, I would describe him as a freelance prophet. Okay? So there were prophets at that time that worked for the king. That's not Elijah. Elijah did not work for the king. Uh, the biblical way to describe Elijah is Elijah was a prophet of God. So he went to Ahab and said, what you're doing is evil. And uh, in kind of a bold move, Elijah says, uh, God told me no rain for three years. Next time it rains is when I'm going to say it's going to rain. You know, that's some pretty strong stuff. Okay, so Elijah goes away. He leaves. He ends up living with a widow during this time, and it's not a Jewish widow, it's outside the country. During this time, the widow's son dies, and that's the only way the widow's ever going to survive, is if she has the son lives. Elijah, perhaps in a foreshadowing of what Jesus does with Lazarus, raises the son from the dead, and we have that story of God's proof through the man of God, Elijah. Elijah then comes back allows rain to happen, and has this big, awesome confrontation with all these prophets of Baal. You know, this is the story, if you remember, where, you know, they're going to have fire on the altar, and, you know, uh, the prophets of Baal are trying to get the fire to come down to, to burn their sacrifice, and it's happening for days, and all Elijah is doing is just trash talking. You know, this is a great story for Super Bowl day. There's a lot of trash talking going on. It's like, oh, your God's asleep. Wake him up. Blah, 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 blah. So uh, Baal never gets the, the sacrifice to go. Uh, Elijah throws water on his. He's like, ah, you know, we're going to have a big show today. So he throws water on it. You know, God comes down with the fire, laps up all the water, has the sacrifice. Prophets of Baal don't do so well. I'll let you read that part of the story yourself. So Elijah, very important prophet in the Old Testament. Okay. So, um, after this episode, you, know, you would think, you would think that after this big show of force, Elijah would you know, have a prominent role in the kingdom. Hmm, not so much. You see, the king's wife Jezebel, not happy about this. 
and she still got loyal people in her army, so they're going to go chase for Elijah. Elijah kind of runs away, hides for a while, uh, then comes back, has a confrontation with Ahab, and Ahab starts repenting. So, big summary of a long story that you need to read, okay? So now we're at the place where we've got Elijah, the older prophet, the one that did all this work, was called by God to say, go find this gentleman named Elisha. He's going to be your successor. So Elijah goes out, finds Elisha, takes his mantle, which is like a cape, and puts it on Elisha. And that's where we get the idea of passing the mantle is from this story. So Eli, now we have these two together. But what we don't have is a lot of, is really any stories about the apprentice Elisha and Elijah doing things in the kingdom. We just, we don't hear about it. There's no stories of that. We have to fill them in. You know, those Hollywood screenwriters that I talked about before, they would have to fill in some stories about what's going on. But what we do see in today's story, even though we don't have background of the relationship, is how strong the relationship between these two is. We see this in this short story. Because Elijah knows that this is his last day or two on earth. Okay? Now, the, the writer of 2 Kings foreshadows what's going to happen. It's like, well, you know, Elijah is going to go in a chariot up to heaven. I am not positive, based on the story, if Elisha and Elijah know exactly what's going to happen. We do know that they both know that Elijah is no longer going to be on earth. How it's going to happen, I'm not positive they both know. And I would imagine that if God told Elijah, yeah, yeah I'm coming down with a chariot elevator to come take you up, he may not have understood what was going on anyway. But they knew the time was going to be over. So Elijah's like, okay, Elisha, um, our journey is over. Um, I need you to stay here because God's telling me I got to go to this next town. And Elisha is like, uh-uh, no way. As surely as God lives and you lives, I'm not leaving your side. And this happens two more times. You can see Elisha just is not ready to let go. And in addition, we have these groups of prophets that they run into. And the prophets come up to Eli, Elisha and said, do you know your master's being taken from you? Elijah's going today? And he's like, I don't want to hear it. Be silent. Now we get the impression, at least I do, reading the Bible, I, I always think of prophets, you know, having loud voices and speaking to groups of people. Imagine, if you would, Will Ferrell being serious with one of his strong voices. That's kind of what I, you know, I imagine prophets saying. So here we, you know, I imagine the prophets coming out and just telling Elijah in a loud voice, your, you know, your master's being taken away. But maybe that's not how that happened. You know, maybe this group of prophets came over to El El Elisha and said, hey, do you know your master's being taken away today? And Eli, Elisha responding, yes, I know, just, just be quiet about it. I, I don't want to, I don't want to hear. We have an example of this story. So even though Elisha knew that his master was being taken away and that it was the will of God, that still did not stop the pain that was in his heart. And I think that's, a lesson for us today. That, you know, Elijah didn't say, oh, you know, no, no, no. You, you have to stay here because God said that's exact. No, there was understanding of the emotions that were going on. And we see that in this story. So when we have situations where loved ones go to the next life, even though we may know and be assured by the love and grace of Jesus Christ 
that they will be in with God and in a place of ultimate happiness, that doesn't prevent us from missing them. That doesn't prevent us from hurting. Elisha, no doubt, even when he saw Elijah going up on that heavenly escalator chariot, he started to miss his friend. And that's just how we're built. That's how God made us, is to have these kind of relationships and know that even though, even though someone may pass to a place that we know is better, that pain still lives with us in our heart. In a few days, we're going to observe Ash Wednesday. We're going to observe the day when we are reminded how short our lives are. We're going to be reminded that we are made up of dust. Now granted, it is the same dust that makes up the stars of heaven, but it is dust nonetheless. We are going to be reminded Ash Wednesday when the cross, the symbol of salvation that goes beyond the dust that it's written in, is going to be given to us by the everlasting power of God. This dust drawn on our foreheads is a reminder of the relationships we have on this earth. It's a reminder that Elijah and Elisha had one of those relationships and that God knows about this love we have for each other. So no matter how certain we are of eternity, we are going to mourn and grieve and maybe even be mad. You know, maybe that's what Elisha was happening. He's like, don't you tell me about my master leaving. I'm not happy about it. Be quiet. You know, that is also an emotion we have that is okay. Because even though these two were powerful prophets, men of God, that could bring down the fire of heaven, they were still very human and missed each other. So let's change our attention to the gospel reading as we close. So in this reading, we have Peter, James, and John going up to the mountain. And Elijah, Elijah shows up along with Moses. And Peter is the one we hear from. We often hear from Peter in the Gospels. And oftentimes, Peter gets the, the bad rap as someone who uh, mouth moves before brain kind of thing sometimes. We, we feel that. And we will hear sometimes from Jesus about Peter. Hey, Peter, that's, that's not what's happening here. You get behind me, Satan. You know, those, Jesus does admonish Peter. But Peter, not knowing what to say, is not admonished by Jesus here. We don't see anything where Jesus says, Peter, you have not responded correctly. But what we do see is Peter not knowing what to do. You see, Peter had this, what we call uh, a spiritual mountaintop experience. Yeah, it, it's on a mountain. That's where we get the idea. Jesus is be transfigured into something that he's never seen before. He's got Elijah, the person that he probably set out a chair a couple weeks ago, showing up. Uh, and he's got Moses showing up. So Peter... The gospel records, terrified and doesn't know what to say. Uh, duh, w what can he say at this point? So what Peter does, you know, I think the modern equivalent that we would do is we would get out our cell phone and try and make a video of what's going on because we don't know what's happening. What Peter's going to try and do is he's going to try and build something. He's going to make a memorial because this event... This event must be captured. This event must be held on to. You know, it, it's easy to say now, well, Peter should just have lived in that moment and just, and just held on to that moment as best he could. But that's not what we humans like to do. We want to hold on to it 
tightly. And by making some sort of memorial up there, that's what Peter could do. Uh, That's not what happens. Uh, Jesus tells him, yeah, uh, don't tell anybody about this until after all the things have happened. And we get the impression that that was pretty easy for James and John and Peter to follow. Because who is going to, how are they going to explain this? How are they going to explain this? And sometimes we have experiences of God. You know, many of us have experiences of God in nature. God intervening in our life. That we try and explain to someone and it's hard to explain. Even if we had the video on our phone, we still couldn't explain it. And that's the kind of experiences that we can have in our life with God that sometimes we we don't know how to share. But also know that like Elisha and Peter, we are going to respond to God's events in our lives in a way that is very human. And God understands that. God supports that. God loves that that we are responding to God and each other in human ways the best we can. And sometimes the best we can is like, I I just don't know what to say. And that is okay too. 